they're hanging, but that was that's not a Department of Public Works issue. Uh, we, the county, does not need right of way or easements to do the work that is proposed under this middle lane bridge removal and restoration. As I have uh, explained to Commissioner Bruel in multiple emails, the, we have the uh, we can do all that work within our right of prescriptive maintenance uh, or what's called waters of the U.S., in other words, within the stream. We do not need easements or we do not need to acquire any right-of-way from any private property owners out there in order to proceed with the proposed bridge removal and site restoration project. Uh, to, in order for anything more than that to be done, using NOAA funding, then either easements or property acquisition is required. Right, well let's, let's get back to the core issue here. Do we want to get an update of the, where we are with the bridges in the county? If so, what is the format that we want to get briefed on? I, I was requesting that we um, have an update on the mill lane. Um, I, I believe there's more to it than NOAA or the uh, Spectrum trustees. I, I believe the Eastern Shoreline Conservancy was pursuing other funding, um, and also, and also on the rolling mill lane, um, I, I would like to have a cost estimate on a uh, replacement. Uh, I know the 1.5 million was for a trestle bridge. What is the replacement? Are there environmental issues? Well, we're not going to be able to answer those today. So let, let's get back to the core issue: Is it countywide bridge projects, no. or just the two bridge projects that you mentioned? The, well, actually, it's three. We have to revisit Old Elk Neck because the uh, approach does need to be addressed, but having the approach in a mile widening um, doesn't need the, to be the uh, total assessed cost. Let's break it apart and, um, and see you know, what options we have. Right, so is, does the board want just an update on those three? I, 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 an update. I, yes. would, I would agree. All right. So. I'm, I'm not opposed to, to any kind of update at all. I quite frankly enjoy hearing explanations from uh, Director Flanagan. I learn something every time I we out here and speak. Uh, but if it's just those those three projects, again, we're making it very political. There's hand-picked projects that, that have been picked to review again. I think that makes the, the process political, and I don't think that's the right direction. If we're going to review it, we should be reviewing all of them. Well, one, all right, one, we just get a, can you just give us a, um, why don't you just give us an update of where we're at in the CIP with the bridges. I don't think we need the detail of cost estimates of approach, but hey, this bridge will be fixed or replaced 2015. This one's scheduled for 16. Does that sound okay in terms of schedule? I'll use the word delivery date on when, what bridges are going to be completed and when. Yeah, no, I think we do need the, the cost estimates for approach. That, that is a vital part to uh, making it safe. What are, right now, all we have is a bridge. We have to address the approach. We spent two hours already talking about um, the El, old Elk Neck Road and all the components. If you'd like to do it again, I don't mind. Yeah. The component, the, the, the final conclusion that we reached was not just The components fine. were, this is your choice. Right, well, we need to move the discussion along. So. Do we want to work with Scott and just see what type, just, um, you know, see what type of discussion we want to have moving forward? If it's all the bridges yep. instead of the cherry pick bridges. The cherry pick bridges, then. All right, that's fine. We're going to move along. Those bridges were added because the, the citizens um, petitioned to have them open. The fire <laughs> and the police said that it was vital to have these bridges open. Get it right. And one of them is in the priority planning area. Okay. So there you go. We'll, we'll move forward. Scott, we'll follow up with you on what the best way is to move forward. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Moore. Um, I, I was hoping that uh, Al could give us an update on uh, the SBCA contract. I know that we are soliciting a request for proposals now. Have we received any? And also, I'd like an update, um, if you would, on our uh, plan for the in-home. Yeah, the, uh, the RFP's out. Uh, proposals are due September 14th. Um, what we're doing as far as the transition, anticipating that there's going to be a period uh, from August 30th to October 1st that we'll have to deal with uh, animal control 
essentially what we're looking at is the uh, the calls that will be coming through uh, communications uh, the communication center. We're going to concentrate on on those calls. What we've done, we've sent out um, requests for uh, quotes and expressions of interest to um, various kennel establishments in the county and also uh, uh, veterinarians uh, that would be able to provide those services including euthanasia, uh, decapitation, and uh, sheltering. Uh, also we have uh, uh, asked for expressions of interest uh, as for, for the animal control, the pickup side, uh, the people that would be going out and uh, <clears throat> capturing the uh, uh, animals and creating them and then delivering them to one of the vendors that will be sheltering. Uh, so we have we have a couple of vendors that we that have expressed interest there. Uh, we're going to talk to a third. Uh, we have a conference call at noon today to talk to a third, and uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. I think uh, <clears throat> it's a very important uh, information to get out to the public. What happens on September first when there is a, a stray animal that needs to be picked up? What is it that the public needs to do, and who do they yeah. need to call? One of the things we'll be doing also, we'll have uh, a resource. Uh, listing available for uh, disposal of unwanted animals. Uh, there are uh, groups and facilities in the county that uh, folks will be able to take those uh, animals to. Uh, so we'll have that available also. We're developing that list of facilities now. Okay. Do we, have we had anybody respond to the RFP? Uh, not that I'm aware. I, uh, I'll find out this afternoon. Okay. And then one other thing. I, I have uh, Receive phone calls and emails from dozens of constituents about the, the tier map and questions uh, regarding that. And I know in our previous discussions we talked about notifying the developers of those properties that exist within the proposed tier four area. What I would like to propose to the board commissioners is that we notify every property owner that is within the proposed tier four area to let them let them know um, that there's a proposed map out there that they they need to research it, do their homework, find out how it affects them. I think it's very important to communicate. There's a lot of people out there that do not understand what's going on and how this, this may potentially affect them. Um, I think it's the least that we can do is to communicate with folks and let them know what's happening because this is probably one of the most important decisions we'll make. Commissioner Moore, are you aware that all of the uh, homeowners in that tier four area will not be affected? Well, that is, that's a discussion for Here's just something up, but hey, well, let's let's get specific. Are you talking individual property owners. Yes. Every, Every single yeah. one. It's only those that have 59 acres or more will be affected. And are you aware how they're going to be affected? No, and we've agreed on that. Yes, they, they will not be able to do a major subdivision. Well, it's it's not just those folks who are able to do major subdivision or not able to do major subdivision that I'm concerned about. It's communication to the people so that they know what's going on. We'll discuss that this afternoon. Okay. What the best way to move forward. That's fine. Thank you. For sure. Um, a couple of comments first. Um, if the East Shore Land Conservancy has grant opportunities uh, for any bridge or, or uh, road improvements. No, remediation. Okay. It was uh, for re remediation. remediation, whatever. Have them send a letter and give us some information, put it in writing. Uh, number two, if any fire, police, um, agency or whatever says that a bridge or road or anything is vital to the service to the community, get them to put it in writing. I have it. Um, I would encourage all the commissioners to visit the Mill Lane uh, bridge site uh, before the, the bid open or, or bid award. Um, especially on the eastern side of the bridge. There's, there's two sides of the bridge, obviously. The eastern side, I think you can see a whole lot more of the, of the impact of the storm damage and the um, scope of the work that's going to be necessary to remediate that site. And, and I know that Jim has been there a couple of times. I've been there too many times. And um, 
it's very critical that you understand it by being there. And, and, and it will require a walk, about a quarter mile walk, um, to the eastern side of that bridge. I would definitely encourage all the commissioners to visit that site before uh, uh, Mr. Flanagan brings to our attention, because I know that it's been advertised, and I know that there's um, going to be the discussion about the remediation and, and cleanup of that site. Um, also, I got a, a phone call from Jimmy Bamba, um, who currently owns the off-track betting location, and, and he asked me to ask the commissioners if they would be willing to support uh, video lot, slots at his location. And uh, apparently he's gone out and gotten a letter from the town of Northeast to support it. Um, and the question is, do we, the county commissioners, also want to put together a letter of support? Um, I told them that, in my opinion, this was a little, little too little too late. Uh, it's my understanding the special session is going to be wrapping up the next day or two. And uh, to try to add Northeast to the locations on the ballot is practically impossible at this point in time. But he, um, I said that I would just throw it your, to your attention for your consideration. If you think that there's any benefit to it, we can put um, a letter of recommendation um, on that effort. I guess that's all I have for now. Great. Well, in closing, uh, last Thursday was at the Clore Medic Station ribbon cutting up in Clore at the uh, Department of Public Works yard there. It was a nice event. It's a nice building, Earth Tone, got the DES blue roof, and some of the neighbors were there. They had the state police medevac helicopter. Folks could just take a look at it up close. So it was a nice event. And, uh, Commissioner Moore was there, and Commissioner Hodge was kind enough to donate the hamburgers. So, very good. Commissioner Broom. That's what I meant, Commissioner. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Commissioner Broom. But anyway, we've spoken on behalf of the commissioners, and it was a nice project. Former Commissioner Tone was there as well, because he was a lead advocate for that building at the time when he was a commissioner, so he got to say a few words too, so it's good to see him. So, with that, Mr. Warren. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, staff recommends uh, that the board move to closed session pursuant to Maryland and Teddy Coos, State Government 10508. A1 to review and discuss applicants for appointments to the Planning Commission, Local Development Council, and the Board of Parks and Recreation. I'd like to take the motion to move to close executive session for the reasons stated from the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Five minutes. Bathroom break?